Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. It's my granny's birthday today. I'm here at the graveyard. Gonna, gonna pay my visits and talk to her a little bit, but you know, I wanted to actually make a video about alcoholism while I'm here. Um, just because so many people have uh, contacted me regarding my videos on alcoholism and how much it's helped them. And, uh, you know, that was the sole purpose of making those videos on the DTs, also known as delirium tremens. And I made a video on how to get through alcohol withdrawals naturally. Um, although I do recommend, which I stated in that video, if you feel like you need to go to the hospital, you better do it. Listen to your gut. Um, but so many people have contacted me, letting me know that that video, those videos, excuse me, about alcoholism, have actually inspired them to get off the bottle. And multiple people have told me that they're like a month into uh, sobriety because of those videos. And that makes me incredibly happy because that is the sole purpose of why I erected those videos. So that makes my heart very, very warm. And I came to the graveyard today to see my grandmother, but I also wanted to make a video here because when my grandma was getting older and getting sick, I was an alcoholic. Smoking weed, just being an unrighteous fool. Drinking, you know, vodka every night, every day. And uh, due to that, I really just became a drunk zombie and I didn't spend as much time with her as I should have. And I regret that heavily. And uh, it just sucks when someone's gone and you begin to realize how you should have spent more time with that person. But I can't change the past, but I can change the present. And I have massively. And, uh, you know, I communicate with my grandmother in dreams. She visits me at my home. Um, oftentimes my room will just become saturated in the smell of her perfume or the smell of her cooking and lights will go on and off. And there's, there's, there's certain ways that I know she's communicating with me. And I can feel her now with me here. So th your ancestors are always on the scene watching your monkey ass, even though you stumble and trip all the time. Like I continue to do, they're they're forgiving and they're there for you. They're your guides. But uh, again, you know, if, if you're an alcoholic and you're watching this video, I, I really do hope that this transmission of these th this video can help inspire you to to really question what the fuck it is you're doing. Are you neglecting loved ones that are there for you always because of your addictions? Because if you are, you really need to change your ways. Don't make the same mistakes that I have. I mean, shit, there were so many times where I was off getting drunk when I should have been there with my grandma. I, I should have had a closer connection with her towards the end of her life. And uh, although I was there, I wasn't at the same time. Showing up once a week or once every two weeks or a month to, to say hi to your grandmother and spend time with her, that's not okay. Any time that you place a substance above... Uh, a loved one or someone who cares about you that's when you know you have a problem and that's when you know that you need to really consider what the fuck it is you're doing because you're not being smart you're being a fool and I know that because I've been there and I've done it but I have been sober for a very long time and you know that's one of the double-edged swords of getting sober you, you use substances to suppress how you really feel and once you get off the substance you begin to realize the things that you did that were unrighteous so being, being sober is not an easy thing to do because it requires you to be an adult. It requires you to be intelligent. It requires you to be a, a fucking grown-up for once. And let me tell you, alcohol is like drinking venom. It will drag you down. It will destroy your liver. It will destroy your gut. It will destroy your mind. If you remain addicted to any substance long enough that's destroying you, it will start to debauch your soul. Again, it will debauch your soul. When you remain addicted to something, it invites negative energies into your life and they begin to swim around you and swirl around you until you get sober and cleanse that shit out of you. So, in my opinion, the negative energies on the planet want us to remain addicted to things because when we destroy our vessels and weaken our immunity they can gain access to our physical bodies very rapidly and very simple and very just easily ladies and gentlemen so 
when I started getting off the bottle, I really saw how many demonic energies were swirling around me. I saw them with my own eyes. I could hear them visually. I could see them. And you may think these are just simply hallucinations from a lack of ethanol in your system or a lack of whatever drug it is that you're addicted to in your system. But there's, there's more to it than that. There's more to it than that. There are so many different realities interweaving with this reality. It really is like the physical dimension is like an onion where there's different dimensions overlapping and interweaving with this physical world like layers of an onion. There's multiple worlds interacting with this world. The astral plane, the non-physical planes, the etheric realms. So, and we are a food source to certain negative energies on this planet. So you better uh, reconsider what it is you're doing if you're addicted to fucking alcohol because alcohol is an evil, evil substance. I mean, I, I see all these people all the time getting together for these parties and the, the catalyst for the party is alcohol. I don't think most people would be going to parties if there wasn't booze involved. So it's sad to me that it requires people to cling to a substance to be socially lubricated and to have a good time. That, that's a con on your, on your life completely and I mean I, I know people here at this graveyard who have died from alcoholism and you know their families had to put up with with that and it's just it's not a good thing man so I'm, I'm glad that I went through delirium tremens because it really motivated me to change myself to change myself I was being just a stupid stupid person and again, I was neglecting time with someone who loved me, who was always there for me, who always supported me. Because, uh, you know, I can't blame the alcohol. I blame myself. But that's another thing. We can't use our addictions as a crutch to blame all the bad things in our life on. We can't do that. We are more powerful than the substance. And even when we are addicted to something, deep down inside we know better. There's a soft voice inside of us that speaks to us constantly, but we've learned to neglect that voice because that voice wants us to be responsible individuals. So we listen to the venomous voice within us that drags us down. and So we really do have two selves existing within ourselves, and there's a schism between the two. And we, most of us here in the United States and worldwide, we cling to the negative self, the lower self, the self that's addicted to the worldly pleasures that aren't pleasures at all. They're, they're deadly pleasures. Like being stung by a toxic scorpion over and over and over. And we've learned to love it. We've learned to love intoxicating ourselves with poisons. <clears throat> to the point where, I mean, it's, it's a cultural fascination. Alcohol is a cultural just total fascination. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know who collect all these old wines and this old tequilas and all this bullshit. It's like, Jesus Christ. You... I don't get it. I really don't get it. So, I'm going to wrap this one up. On behalf of the Sacred Starseed Serpent Uraeus YouTube channel, thank you for watching this video. Here's my grandmother's grave. My grandma and my grandpa. So, again, be smart, ladies and gentlemen. You still have time to change your ways. But if you don't take action now, you're going to live in a toxic cycle of I'll do it tomorrow. And the problem with that is, is days become weeks, weeks become months, months become years. Before you know it, five years have gone by and you're still fucking drinking. And that makes me sad. It truly makes me sad. And the, the only reason you, you tell yourself, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, is because you're addicted. And when you tell yourself, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, deep down inside you know you, you need to get off of it. And that's why you keep saying, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, because you know you need to do it now but you don't listen to that voice. Many people get addicted to substances and they can't let go of those substances. 
out of fear of withdrawals. And I understand that completely. Withdrawal symptoms can be very frightening. But what's even more frightening is remaining addicted to a substance that can create that form of withdrawal. That to me is more frightening than being a man or a woman and, and facing up to the challenge of sobriety and facing your fears because you can only get through your fears if you face them. Ignoring your fears means that you're possessed by your fears and that you're not going to change. So it's a beautiful little monument here. I actually enjoy being in that graveyard so I find them very peaceful. Look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. So, nice trees everywhere. This to me is a power spot, a spot where I can come and be away from the the masses and get some natural energy. I like to come here and touch these trees and I like to walk barefoot on the earth here. Grounding is a very beneficial thing. That's one thing that I recommend all people who are going through the withdrawals do. When I was going through the DTs and I thought I was dying, I would go outside in the middle of the night and I would dig my feet down into the soil, at least a foot, and I'd stand there. Sometimes upwards of 30 minutes doing stretching and yoga and just allowing the free flowing electrons from the earth to go in to my feet up into my body and reset and balance my electrical system. This is an essential key and if you don't believe me you need to pick up the book called Earthing. Uh, I can't remember name I can't remember the name of that author but if you pick up that book you'll know exactly what I mean when I say that it's beneficial and absolutely essential that you ground yourself regardless of what it regardless of whether you're getting off of alcohol or a certain substance. You need to ground yourself regardless because we live in a world where most of us will go the duration of our lives never really getting any direct current from, from the earth. Most of us wear shoes when we go outside. We sleep, on ho we sleep in houses that are raised off the earth. We're not grounded. We wear sh shoes that have a shoe sole that blocks us from picking up electrons from the earth. Um, we don't touch trees. We're an unnatural species. So That helped me massively. I don't think I talked about that much in my video regarding alcoholism, about how to go get through the withdrawals and the DTs, but grounding yourself really, in my own experience, helped massively. When my heart rate was accelerated heavily when I was going through the DTs, I did find that by standing on the, uh, standing in the dirt and doing deep breathing techniques, it did help lower my heart rate, and it just filled me with a certain emotional feeling that I was going to get through it and you know connecting yourself to the mother energy of earth while you're going through a traumatic experience can be very nourishing and very uh, comforting because it is motherly energy it is feminine energy and that's very comforting so I'm going to wrap this one up again it's a beautiful day out here Paying my respects to my deceased grandmother. Walking around. Just thankful to be alive and grateful to be alive. There's a beautiful uh, candle set up here on this grave. I don't know if you can see it. It's really cool. But not a, get, not a day goes by or I don't regret all the stupid shit I did when I was an alcoholic. And again, like I said earlier, once you start getting sober, you begin to take away the numbing effect of the alcohol or whatever substance it is that you're addicted to, and you begin to consciously recognize and acknowledge all the stupid shit you did when you were addicted, not only to yourself, but your family, your friends, your loved ones, sometimes even your animals, your pets. So, If you uh, are an alcoholic, a severe alcoholic, I do recommend that you uh, seek some help and that uh, you make a conscious decision to let go. Because uh, what good is this life you're living right now 
as an addicted person, if you potentially will wind up dead from your addiction, you know how embarrassing that is? Die from addiction? You know how disappointing that will be if you die from a substance? Come on, man. That is not an honorable death. And I feel for all the souls who have lost their lives from addiction. I just, I can't imagine how sad that must be to go through that. To die from alcohol poisoning or it's just wasted potential. And when I was going through the DTs, I, I thought, I, I almost was positive that I was going to die. And uh, when, you're, when you're close to, when you feel close to death, let me tell you, it gives you a different outlook on life. And for me, that was a beneficial thing because I needed something to wake my ass up. I needed something to jar me out of my ignorance. And it worked massively. <laughs> so, on behalf of the Sacred Starseed Serpent Uraeus YouTube channel, thank you for watching this video. And I hope this video can help inspire you to do something creative and positive for your health today. Whether that be getting a water filter or, you know, starting the detox process. If you're an, an, if you're an addicted person, I hope that this video can help inspire you to want to get healthy, to want to get sober. Peace be with you. Don't kill yourself with a substance. You're worth more than that. Peace.